<clears throat> uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so just a quick review of the agenda. We've got planning for the Hackfest, um, a brief update on where we are with Rocket Chat, um, continuing discussion of the... Uh, there's somebody in a room with a lot of background noise. Um, if they could mute, please. Um, continuing discussion of the security badging. Um, I don't know if Brian is on and going to join. I know he has a cold and he's on the road. He's not joining. Okay, so maybe we want to defer that or um, probably, I suspect. Because I'm not sure what Brian had in mind, to be honest. Y yeah, we you can know. defer. N not a problem. Okay. A reminder that there is hiring. Uh, Hart has requested uh, time to review the, uh, the white paper. Uh, skeleton draft um, document, which I think we need a link to in the chat, since I don't see it in the in the in the note here. And then um, uh, we uh, will then continue our discussion of the working group charters. And I think we have uh, I, I can't remember now which ones were attached um, and which ones we need to discuss because I wasn't on last week, so. Um, Todd, do you did, could you remind me, please? Which <laughs> yep. Uh, so we have Google Docs for the technical working group China identity and architecture. Uh, Hart sent over the charter for the white paper working group uh, as a PDF, uh, so that was attached. Oh. And what went out last night, uh, as well as the skeleton outline for the white paper work group, was uh, a PDF attached as well. And then we're when we get to the work group charter section, we're still waiting for something from the requirements work group, the protocol working group, and Fabric SDK working group. Okay, thanks. And then uh, there's one other topic that I'd like to add, and that's um, something that came out. We just had the governing board meeting uh, ended about four minutes ago, and um, um, Rob Palatnik of DTCC brought up the discussion that you know, some of us were having back in December when uh, Digital Assets published the the white paper on the the global synchronization log, and um, so we we just had a brief discussion in the governing board that was then tasked to me to sort of raise the discussion back in the context of uh, you know where the discussion really belongs in the TSC in terms of you know is there anything we should be doing about the the GSL what should we do, and you know, uh, and so forth. So I think I'd like to tap that on the end if we have any time. Anything else? Okay. Um, so Todd Hackfest, uh, where are we? Yep. Uh, so plan for February first and second in San Francisco. There's roughly fifty people that have registered as of now, which is fantastic. Uh, if you're planning to attend, please get registered as soon as possible. Uh, dropping the link in to uh, the chat window now. Uh, we also have a draft agenda going for that. If there's topics that you want to see, uh, please get those slotted in. Uh, we will run this on unconference format, uh, as we typically do, and map out the agenda at the morning of day one. Uh, so any topics, please get those added. Otherwise, uh, we're still looking uh, tentatively to have a Hackfest in Shanghai in March. Uh, uh, piggybacking on the hackathon uh, as well as New York in May. Uh, I've been chatting with a few people on those, but if you do have venue space, please get in touch uh, so we can see what we can get planned. Any questions there? All right, sounds good. I think it's really great that we're seeing the uh, the numbers up this early. That's uh, a really good sign. So I'm, I'm enthusiastic about that. And I'd like to make sure that you know, when we do get together in San Francisco that, um, you know, we, we, we try and focus a little bit less on talking, a little bit more on actually, you know, engaging and, and doing some, uh, you know, collaboration, especially between the projects. I think that would be important. Um, okay. Um, is Ryan or who's giving the update on RacketChat? 
I'm, I'm not sure if Rai is on, uh, so I'll just give a quick update. Uh, the IT team is working on this. Uh, it does support uh, the use of your uh, Linux Foundation ID, LFID, if you have one, uh, which is great. Um, and it looks like this will be up before the Hackfest on February 1st and 2nd. So uh, while people are face to face there, we can we can kick the tires with it um, in real time. Great. Um, I think that's going to be important because I, I keep I keep getting feedback, uh, you know, mostly in Slack, actually. Um, people saying, oh, I was looking for something and it's not there and how come? And you know, so the sooner that we can get to a point where we have um, archived, uh, where, where, where we aren't having to archive and, you know, drop off the edge of the world, all these conversations um, uh, will be a, a good thing. So, okay, and um, and then you want to send a reminder then about the, the hiring. I know that uh, there's already been some people, um, you know, putting in for the different positions, but maybe you could remind everybody what the positions are and, and where they can go. Yeah, certainly. So I just dropped a link in. Uh, this was a blog post just summarizing every everything we're looking for, uh, but essentially we're looking to bring on four full-time hires. Uh, two community architects to work very closely with the technical community here, uh, as well as a security maven, um, just to make sure that the community is implementing best practices for secure software development, uh, etc. Uh, and then lastly would be a director of ecosystem development, uh, really a company, uh, a person working with the various member companies and non-members, uh, just weaving together the overall strategy, helping them further engage in the technical activity as well as the business and marketing activity. Uh, but there's uh, job descriptions uh, in the link that I sent for all of those. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me directly. Uh, otherwise, uh, there's a link for how to apply apply for those. So. If you know anyone in your network that would be a good fit, please uh, send them our way. Great. Thank you. Any questions on that? <clears throat> okay. Then um, next up is Hart. Um, hey, everybody. I just wanted to mention that uh, the white paper working group is progressing we have come up with what we're calling a skeleton white paper, which is essentially an outline with a lot of points we want to cover in the white paper. Uh, and we wanted to do this before we committed a bunch of time to actually writing the white paper so that we wouldn't have to uh, make a ton of changes later on and kind of get stuck in a, a vicious cycle of writing and then having to repeat a bunch of effort. Um, we would like the TSC to uh, vote to hopefully approve this document uh, perhaps next week. Uh, so if anyone really, but especially TSC members, if you could go over this document in the coming week, uh, give us feedback or comments, uh, and then uh, we can go from there. Uh, does anyone have any questions? So, Hart, from, um, well, let, let me just sort of ask, who hasn't had a chance to review the white paper skeleton? I know it's been out um, for a while. I know some, some people have given feedback. Uh, I'm just curious who hasn't yet felt that they've had a chance to review this. Chris, this is Greg. I, I haven't had a chance to. I apologize. This is Dan. I, I also haven't gotten around to that yet. Okay. Any others? Yeah, this is Zano. Do you hear me? I, I, I actually had read the previous paper, but not the skeleton, so I need to do that. Uh, I, okay. But so I just wanted to clarify, Hart, I mean, I know you struggle with this, you know, the, the, it was kind of a moving target, which I can, I can understand is not uh, sustainable. And so my understanding is the goal is to now, you know, set the direction and be able to stick to that, right? Did you also clarify which uh, audience you're trying to address? Because that was part of the question. That's in the skeleton. So we have an outline and we also have a couple of paragraphs about uh, what we're trying to address. 
who we're trying to address points to and, and, and sort of what what we're trying to say to who, I guess. So we have a couple of paragraphs on okay. that in the document. And if you have comments on that, you know, obviously, please feel free to let us know. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> everybody has homework uh, who hasn't already reviewed and provided feedback to Hart and the uh, white paper working group on the skeleton and Todd, let's tee up um, uh, a decision for next next week. Will do. In the agenda. Um, so uh, for those of you who, who need to, please please try to carve out half an hour. It's, it's not a, a lengthy read, um, and uh, so carve out a half an hour to review it and provide Hart with any feedback. Um, and, uh, and then I'd like to, you know, at least, you know, get agreement on, you know, from a purpose in the general outline, is this the direction that we're trying to, you know, that, that we all agree is, is where the white paper should head um, uh, for, for next week. Okay. Um, next up, working group charters. And again, uh, I, uh, I apologize, I wasn't around last week and um, I'm not actually sure which ones we've done yet, Todd, so help me. Yeah, certainly. So um, we hadn't received most of them last week, so Brian's suggestion was that these get sent over uh, email over the last week. Uh, we would have a discussion this week in the TSC call, uh, make sure that we get the remaining few, uh, and then look for formal adoption uh, in, in next week's TSC call. So I think this call is really just focused on any questions, comments, on the four that have already come in, and then a reminder to the requirements working group, protocol working group, and Fabric SDK working group to to get theirs over. Okay, all right, fair enough. Um, so let's go in alphabetical order. I see architecture is uh, Ramon. Hi Chris, yes, I'm on. All right, so um, let's let's review this one. All right, does uh, do everybody have the uh, Google Docs link? Okay. It was sent over in the email. Um, so, um, you know, the architecture working group, uh, it's fairly straightforward. We have a clear charter from the beginning. Uh, we are focused on uh, uh, developing an architectural framework uh, for enterprise class uh, ledgers. Uh, and ideally converging on a modular architecture. Uh, we realize that, you know, that's not a, a easy task, uh, that everybody will converge exactly on that, uh, um, that modular architecture, but we think it's a goal uh, that we should be uh, shooting for anyway. Um, so the, the main uh, work involved in uh, developing that architectural framework is identifying common components, providing the functional decomposition, focus more on uh, you know what those functions are rather than how. The how would be uh, the implementation details and the design that's associated with uh, the individual projects. Um, and then um, um, providing uh, the interface definitions uh, between the components. Uh, the other uh, important aspect that uh, we want to cover and haven't covered yet is the aspect of interoperability. What does interoperability mean between uh, ledgers between different versions of ledgers uh, and uh, different stacks themselves. And that's something that uh, we would like to address as well. Um, so uh, besides that, it, uh, the, uh, the work group serves as a cross-project forum for, archi uh, for architects and technologists across the project. Uh, we exchange ideas and explore alternate architectural options. Uh, we discuss trade-offs and capture the reasoning uh, behind the choices that we make, uh, um, both in general for the ideal architecture and for the individual choices that the project have made. Uh, and, uh, you know, we provide recommendations and guidance to the projects under the Hyperledger umbrella, hoping to encourage them to converge on a modular architecture. Um, you know, obviously we invite uh, uh, the projects uh, to kind of, uh, uh, you know, um, do uh, to come uh, to the work group and we provide uh, you know design review and kind of guidance back on um, uh, on uh, on trying to move towards a converged architecture. 
Any questions there? So, so I would, to yeah, okay. go ahead, Chris. So, 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 Ram, I, the, I think the only thing that I, I, I think this is, I think this is fine. Um, the only one comment that I might make is that under work products, that you also include the, uh, um, the offer to do uh, design reviews. I think I mentioned it there in the last line, uh, Chris. So, if you look at work product. Oh, or, yeah. Okay. Yes. Fine. Thanks. <laughs> I was looking for the word design. Never mind. You had me worried no, there so, for a so, minute, Chris, because we specifically talked about that yesterday. Yep. Yeah. All right. yeah. So, so we uh, we leave most of the design to the individual projects. It's more architecture review, if you will. Uh, but you know, we're uh, we're open to providing design guidance as well. If you, uh, yep. we can explicitly include that if you uh, if you think that's a good idea. Yep. <clears throat> no, I th I think this is fine. Any other feedback? So I, this is Arno. I have one comment. It's a very small thing, but in the collaboration uh, section, you say ideally it collaborates with the use cases, requirements, blah blah blah. I, I do we really want to have this ideally? <laughs> I mean, I understand, yeah. you know, I, I think I understand what this is about, but I would think that from a charter point of view, you probably should say it collaborates. That's the goal, right? That's the ideal. That's all what you're shooting for. Yeah, I, I think it's, a, I take your point. <laughs> the reason I put it there, that's what we wanted from, uh, yeah. to start with, but, uh, you know, it hasn't happened. That's why I snuck the idea, Ian. <laughs> But this is why I'm pointing this out, in fact, because if it's something we feel that it should be, you know, maybe we need to change this and make it an actual goal. Yeah. And then I understand practically it may not quite happen as much as you would like, but I think uh, it might make sense to remove the word there to make it more of a strong commitment. Sure. I will go ahead and do that right now. <laughs> Thanks. Done. Any other um, any other feedback? No. Nope. Okay. Um, then I would suggest we take a quick um, vote. And rather than doing a roll, I would suggest that we just sort of do the opposite and say, does anybody object to, uh, uh, you know, approving this as the architecture working group charter? All right, hearing no objections, I think it's approved. Uh, next up. Thank, thank you. Uh, I'm looking for my email here. Ah, next up, identity, um, I guess it's identity, right, yes. <clears throat> and as somebody just posted that in the chat. I have... Thank you. All right. And is uh, Vipin on? Oh, Jesus. I will tell you that WebEx is really annoying. Or go to meeting, whatever this is. Is Vipin on? He's not in the list of attendees. So. Ah. Okay. Um, maybe we'll defer this until next week then. Um, I would encourage people to review it and provide Vipin with any feedback um, during the week. Um, but since he's not here to hear it, 
Um, and uh, then I think we should just move to the next working group then, which is the white paper working group. Um, yeah, hey Chris, the document went out in the email about the meeting that Todd sent out last night. Yes. Um, I think this is an extremely simple charter. It's probably massively overworded. As you might guess, the purpose of the white paper working group is to write the white paper. Um, and that's basically what the charter says in probably more words than necessary. Uh, but if anyone has any comments on the wording, uh, we'd love to, to hear suggestions. Has everybody got access to the, the email? No. If people could just post it in the chat window, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, it's a PDF. It was uh, attached to the agenda that Todd sent out yesterday. Oh, I need to get on that mailing list. Sorry, I've just recently joined. Sorry about that. Oh, which is the, which is the right mailing list? Um, Hyperledger dash TSC at lists.hyperledger.org. Um, Thank you. I'm sorry. Was there a comment in there? You may have talked over somebody. Sorry. Um, so thoughts on the, the working group charter for identity? If for the white paper working group, I've dropped the uh, message archive in from the list, so you should be able to get the PDF uh, from the bottom of that called uh, white paper charter. So I would have one comment, which is that document really doesn't say what the white paper is really about, except in the introduction where it says that reflects the philosophy of the Hyperledger project. And I understand it may be a bit of a challenge to have a very descriptive, uh, you know, kind of explanation of what the document is about. But. It's kind of a catch-22. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I, it, it seems like, you know, the charter really doesn't say anything other than, well, we'll do some white paper without saying what it is. And I, I understand the challenge in going further than that. But maybe when, if we have a, you know, I assume that Hart has a pretty good sense of where he's going with the paper now. And uh, maybe can they expand a little bit on what this document is supposed to be about? No, I, um, I, I agree with you, Arno, that uh, the first, I think it's the first two paragraphs in the skeleton that are sort of the introduction to the skeleton is something we might want to just drop in here as the charter. Yeah, I looked at this and maybe that's too much. So maybe something in between at a high level, what, what do you expect to cover with the white paper? Uh, I don't know. So that's sort of what that first two paragraphs cover. Right, that's what I thought. Yeah, so here's what I would suggest, because um, I, I, I think I think this is a good point. And so, assuming that um, uh, you know, as people review the skeleton, um, and if we approve the skeleton, that we update the charter with that preamble in terms of the the scope of the white paper. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. Yeah, I think that works. That might be a good way to, to get out of the sketch 22 we're in right now. Yeah. yeah that sounds like a good plan. So, um, regarding that, um, one of the things that that brings, one of the points that that brings out about the white paper working group is that it is, that it has a finite duration. 
um, as opposed to the architecture group where the facility of providing architectural and design reviews is something I think we continue on in perpetuity. Um, the white paper group, especially as we uh, hone in on the specific characteristics of the deliverable, becomes uh, terminal. Um, when we deliver that, it's, it's done. Is that our intention, or would we like this group to be something that continues to provide documentation facilities? Um, I, that's a good question, Mick. I, I would think that, you know, for, we should sort of lay that, you know, if, if, if other things come up that this group could, could then be working on, we can expand the scope to include that over time. But um, I would think that it would be mostly as is described, which is, you know, the, the working group will exist until there's, you know, no apparent need to continue to maintain the white paper. Um, and then it can disband and we can bring it back if we need to do a rethink on our sort of purpose here. Um, uh, you know, we can, we can create another one. But I, I think, I think generally, you know, because each project has its own sort of documentation and so forth, that once we establish this, um, you know, once, once we finish the white paper, that basically we should all focus on doing the work, other works, architecture, and so forth. Yeah, that I, I I agree with you, Chris. I just want to make sure we were understanding the implications of of the specificity yeah. that we're talking about for this. Yep. So I would suggest that we take a quick vote then here that we accept the the I'm sorry the white paper working group charter to be amended with the preamble from the skeleton um, that we approve next week. Any objections? If not, uh, I think Vipin has joined. Vipin, are you there? Yeah, just take, let him take a mute. Oh, is so, it very uh, What's that? Can you hear me? Vipin, we can, but there's a lot of background noise. I don't know if it's yours or somebody else's. Um, yeah, there, there could be. I mean, I mean a general pen. So. Okay. Um, we, were, we were doing uh, the work group starter reviews, and uh, yours is next. Yeah, um, basically it is still the same state as it was last week, it's nothing but a, a you know, very draft version, we did not have a meeting last week, uh, so uh, we uh, defer it to the next yeah, yeah. meeting which is going to happen next week, uh, have not received much input except from uh, yeah. Thomas Arjuno, who suggested uh, adding some collaborators to the list. And yesterday's architecture working group, we had a sort of discussion about the interactions between architecture and identity. Uh, I don't know uh, that we came to a conclusion, but uh, it was felt that uh, the, uh, the identity working group would confine itself to questions of identity and security, uh, which are different from those uh, that would uh, be the concern of the architecture working group, because that is going to be ma mainly uh, the separation of the various uh, layers and the APIs to those layers. So I will add those uh, to the uh, to the charter document in terms of the uh, scope. Uh, again, uh, it is all uh, sort of in vague terms as, as the, uh, in terms of the uh, uh, work product to be delivered, uh, mainly a, uh, a list of, you know, what should the ideal identity solution look like and how can it be uh, 
externalized and how can that component interact with the others and provide uh, you know some clarity on that uh, of course we cannot uh, uh, we cannot enforce any of this stuff but we can only uh, gently cajole people into uh, doing this and I noticed that you have changed the name of uh, Fabric Cop to Fabric CA. I applaud that uh, decision, by the way. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was really upset at the name. But, uh, uh, you know, I, and I did express it a couple of times to, hmm. to Ben. <laughs> Thank you, Vipin. So, so I guess Vipin will defer this to next week. Is that? Yeah. Um, I mean, how how should we proceed in terms of the uh, review of the charter? We go section by section. We... Well, um, I mean, we could we could do a quick review now for what you have in draft and get any feedback and then factor that into um, you know any revisions that you in the working group make. Yeah. Are there any specific? Uh, um, comments on this, on the on the structure of the of the document, or are there any specific comments on on any of the contents? I mean, mainly uh, I put the document out there to be commented on or to be, uh, you know, somebody to make even make changes. I think the link provides for both. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, should should I be going over the over each section or how 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 should this work? What would people like to do? People want to wait or review this now? How long is it? One one and a half pages, maybe not even. I have no. Yeah, if it's quick, then let's go. Okay. Why don't you sort of take a section by section, and then if you know of a specific uh, area that's going to work, then you can highlight that as you go through. Okay, hold on a second, because right now I'm inside the firewall, and I cannot access. Oh, well, I, I'll tell you what, Vipin. Why don't we just do this? We'll just. You know, I would encourage people to provide, you know, comments and feedback from the document, um, and and then you know, we'll we'll take it up and form it next week. That way, uh, you know, because I th I think if you're struggling to get a bit and so forth, I think it's probably best that we just sort of uh, take up the the, the, the next uh, charter, and, and especially given that I think you. you that is still there, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Lippin. So next up so is. I, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Arno. Uh, Sorry, Chris. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I, I have a kind of a general question about the scope of the working group, which I think maybe in my answer, and you know, maybe it's just me, but uh, so I, I'd like some clarity as to the scope uh, in the. And you know, I'll admit that I've not been following the identity working group, so I don't exactly know what they do today. I did attend the very first meeting, and I remember being surprised because they were, in fact, in the meeting. You know, I went there thinking, okay, these are the people who are actually looking into solving the identity problem in the context of the Hyperledger project, specifically like in blockchain implementations. And then there were people in the room who were more in the camp of hey, we want to use blockchain to solve identity problems in general. And so I thought, oh yeah, this is interesting. So there are actually two sides to this story. And then when I read the document now, I still don't know which way it is. In the beginning and in introductions, it seems to be talking about identity issues related to blockchain implementations and frameworks, if you will. And, and then somewhere down in the work products or something, it talks about identity solutions. And and so I'm not sure which one it is now. Have, have you guys evolved towards what, just one, uh, or do you still look into both of these sides of the coin kind of thing? Um, okay, here here's the short answer to that. Um, you know that Chris has been leading this group, and his uh, situation is 
that he is for permissionless uh, blockchains and for uh, identity in general, you know, like self-sovereign identity, you know, those kind of things. So that's where the group was. But uh, I think this dichotomy exists, meaning um, what is identity for natural persons uh, and how it can be shared among not only in, in hyperledger, how, how can it be made uh, broader in scope. Uh, the other is, of course, the identity uh, connected to the uh, functioning of the blockchain, which is the uh, identity of the of the various nodes, the identity of the endorsers, the identity of the uh, validators, and so on. Uh, and then added to that would be uh, the identity of the IoT devices that also participate in the blockchain. So, natu you know, there is a natural split between these two uh, kinds of identity. And it is not clear that the identity working group uh, has to focus on one or the other, but I would say that uh, I agree with you, Arno, that it has to be more focused towards uh, what we can do in, within the hyperledger uh, umbrella in terms of the uh, actual DLTs available here. That is, uh, and of course, touch upon uh, a little bit, touch upon the, the other parts like the business uh, of identity for natural persons that have to be then distributed or some somehow made available to other blockchains or taken from bootstrap from other blockchains this is you know always a question that arises whenever we talk about KYC any of the identity uh, for natural uh, or even institutions that participate in business, I'm not talking about the blockchain itself. So uh, this dichotomy exists and that's why I think uh, you see it in the document. I'll try to make it a little clearer and separate out those uh, concerns a little bit. I hear you though, Arno, and it's the same thing that I'm struggling with myself. So, right. can, hi guys, it's Jonathan. If I can say something. So maybe the separation should be Solutions that we have within Hyperledger, like under the Hyperledger umbrella project, okay, and then we look at, you know, if it's Fabric CA or whatever, or whatever solutions we are, we are having, or we want to have, or we plan on having, or we need, you know, internally. And we should also look, the other aspect is what's out there, right? So if we needed to kind of interoperate with any other system, you know, that should be another part of the work, I think, the working group. So... I wouldn't separate it to this guy. So blockchain, they have their own uh, identity solution, right? So we, we, there are a few companies here that have their own solution. But they, they all, most of the people around the table kind of want to interoperate. So I would do like internal interoperability and something is external. I don't know, that, that's how I would kind of try to separate this. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I wasn't saying ditch one of them. I was, okay, uh, I I know, was I saying, yeah, saying have have both, but very be very clear about the scope because yes. I mean this is just a charter document. It's not yes. not the real uh, output of the of the working group. Uh, so that's that that's that's where I am at right now. I've only been, I mean, I've been attending the identity working group uh, since the beginning, I think, but only in the last couple of. Uh, Three four meetings have I, fo you know, I, I'm focusing on the general direction because I do do agree. For most most of the working groups, I mean, architecture is uh, pretty good, but other, you know, many of the others are uh, too diffuse and sometimes vague, and we are not even sure of the effects that we might have on the different uh, incubation projects. Yes. And identity is a very vast topic, and it's very, you know, it's one of the two fundamental uh, um, atomic uh, particles on the on the blockchain. One is identity, the other is an asset. 
I mean, and then you have identity. In fact, even comes before the asset because the asset is either uh, either created by the identity and then exchanged between identities. You know, all that <coughs> stuff. Plus, you have the other problem, which is the one of identity uh, participating in the consensus in the various operations of the blockchain. I think we have to uh, we have to address both of these uh, aspects, like Jonathan said. Uh, All right, no, no, that's good. Thank you. I mean, for clarifying, I think that the charter would be improved if you highlighted a little bit those two aspects. And I agree, it doesn't have to be about rejecting one. It's really more about documenting the fact that there are two different aspects that we are dealing with here. Thank you. OK, thanks, Vipin. Any other comments on this? If not, then I would suggest we move to the trainer working group charter. The only other aspect uh, which I want to bring up is Brian had suggested that the identity working group would be a natural uh, place where external uh, identity providers or solutions uh, would come and give presentations and we would do some kind of evaluation. Uh, he had mentioned uh, Sovereign and a couple of other, other providers who are, uh, you know, so, so I tried to touch upon them in the charter, but not in a very, uh, very uh, good way. I think. I mean, I, I may have to work on it a little more. Okay. Um. um okay. Thank you. Um, ba -ba 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 China working group. So we have Bawa or Charles on. Who wants to go? Somebody needs to come off mute. Oh, hi. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, this is uh, Bawa. Hi. Um, so how to help us into the transition. Uh, mostly the candidates uh, just follow uh, branch session and also the advice from the GSC. And uh, um, the, the TWG China is mainly uh, a bridge between the global community and uh, help build the local community. And uh, we, we, we hopefully uh, do have uh, several work products um like uh, to guide and drive the uh, technical involvement uh, and uh, uh, promote the uh, the technical uh, collaborations and the adoptions and also we, we would like to have um, uh, um, promote and drive the, the communications uh, and the discussions and also those are uh, technical events and uh, the, uh, this uh, group would be a uh, very with other groups and also we want to uh, make all the pro process uh, and uh, into uh, everyone so uh, we, we, the group just started and everything is new so we would like to welcome uh, for any session of the charter thanks so thanks for what um, anybody have any comments or suggestions? This is, um, this charter is more or less the one that we've voted on. Yes. Was it in December, right? It, I right. don't see any substantial changes to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's it's basically just been put into the same template that the others were using. 
Um, the, 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 the only comment that I had was that in the, under the collaborators, you have all projects in incubation, and it's actually, it should just be all projects. Yeah, sure, thanks. Any other comments, questions, concerns? Okay. If not, Maybe, so. I don't know. Go ahead. Sorry. Chris, if people, let's say, were not happy with the Fabric Cup name in the past, it's already done, we changed it, we merged it this morning, right? But just in general, I just don't want people to feel that they don't have how to air their concerns. <clears throat> where, where should it be? Should we vote? I, I don't know. I, 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 I know a few people that didn't like the name. I didn't realize it was like, you know, Vipin telling Bean. I, I, I don't know. I, didn't, I don't want people to be like bitter, you know? So what's the channel? I'm not to... bitter. No, 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 no. I'm not about you. In general, in general. Like, if people are not happy with something, can we agree to disagree or can we agree to, I don't know how to summarize, like, I'm going to like push a nice kind of summary of what we did with the move, why we did it, et cetera, et cetera, but that's it, so that we have some, some reference. But just in general, I, I'm wondering, if people want to say stuff, where, where is the best channel? So, we just well, so, so each project is basically uh, its own, you know. Yeah, governor, yes. Its own, you know, sort of technical governance and so forth. The TSC sets the standards for, you know, what tools we use and, uh, and, and guidelines so as yes. a broader community and, you know, the, the code of conduct and things like that. The, the TSC is also, though, sort of, you know, a, a, a body that can be used to bring, uh, you know, disputes that can't seem to be reconciled, you know, within a given project or between projects. Uh, as the case may be, um, and so you know we can we can leverage that, and in, in, you know so if you're not happy with an answer, you can bring it to the TSC um, uh, for for discussion. But I would you know strongly encourage that people try to work things out um, you know amongst themselves, um, and uh, you know I mean I think we all just have to recognize that you know if you if you have a concern. You know, each project has a set of maintainers, and those maintainers right. are the ones that are, you know, sort of responsible for oversight over their projects. And, um, you know, again, if, you know, that there's typically ways of reaching them. And, again, if you're not happy with the answer you get, you, you can bring it, you know, forward to the TSC, and we can discuss it, and we can tell people to go and grab a beer and work it out. You know, uh, I mean... Ultimately, that's you know. I think I think we want to sort of build uh, a community in an environment yeah. where yeah. you know people are encouraged to sort of work things out and not, you know, let things fester unnecessarily. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Just. Yeah. So they should talk to the maintainers, or we can bring it up. And yes. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. So, so back to the to the China uh, working group charter. Just uh, I think very briefly. Um, since I didn't hear any other feedback uh, or any other comments, and since we did really approve pretty much everything that it says previously, uh, I uh, would take uh, and ask, is there anybody who objects to approving this charter? Hearing none, the charter is approved. Thanks, Bawa and Charles and Victor in absentia. Um, for doing that, and, um, and the, so the last uh, item was something I brought up uh, <clears throat> at the, you know, as we were doing the review, and, and is Tomash on? Tomash, you there? I'm sorry, I'm here. What's the question? Ah, so... Um, we, so, so back in December, the Digital Assets published the Global Synchronization Log, circulated it to, um, uh, you know, the Hyperledger community, and, um, you know, we had a discussion 
uh, you know, where I think you guys presented uh, the, the paper and so forth. I think the question that was raised in the governing board this morning by uh, Robert uh, Blatnick from BTCC is, so what is to become of that, right? Is this a request to begin work on something like delivering a, a global synchronization log? Is it something that we can do in the context of one of the existing projects as a, um, you know, from, from an implementation perspective? I guess, you know, the real question that, that came up in the, in the governing board this morning was, so what's next? And so I thought it would be worthwhile to have that conversation here. Uh, it, well, actually, the board said we should have the conversation in the TSC, but uh, I, I, I figured we could start that now. We don't have to come to resolution in the next nine minutes, but um, uh, but I, I think it would be worthwhile for you know to hear your perspective on what um, you and digital assets think we should be doing here. Uh, well, as as the paper also stated, we uh, we would want to follow up on this paper. Uh, we promised uh, uh, a more technical detail in the white paper uh, as a next follow-up. And the paper, I think the introduction also said that uh, the, the reason we published this is um, to articulate what what we think would be a useful component. Uh, this is a this is an input to the architecture uh, discussions, and uh, the aim was also to um, influence the development of products, project, projects that are under the Ipology umbrella, um, and see if uh, if they if they would fit with this uh, with this vision um, and work towards an implementation, which we, we would be interested using, uh, since this is a component we think that is useful, and this is a component that we explained is a part of the digital asset stack. Does this answer the question? Well, I guess, you know, so then the question, are, 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 do, you, do you want, or, you know, do you think you want to sort of propose a specific project or sub-project of an existing project that be undertaken to affect this? Well, we um, we evaluated uh, both fabric and 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 the core projects that to if they are able to implement such a uh, component, and uh, we have our own experience with them. Uh, I think uh, we also provided in, provided uh, feedback to to those uh, to those groups. But yes, we did not yet pushed it into open or explained or declared well, how we think this should work. I think this is also not just all decision. It is uh, really uh, um, the question is what is the reception of this paper within the within the community and whether others would want to work on a GSL buy into this idea and would want to work on a GSL on the basis of either of the projects. All right. Well, I, I can I can let Morali you know speak for DTCC, but I know that you know what Robert was suggesting was well, they found it interesting and, and somewhat compelling, and they were wondering so what's next? Um, and so I don't know Morali if you have any insights into um, you know what Robert was was thinking, but uh, and Ben I don't know if you want to comment on you know the the suitability or, or, you know, the ability for fabric. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't see Richard on, so, uh, but I'd ask him, um, uh, you know, the suitability of, of being able to implement something like the GSL in the current fabric architecture. So the question I think really sort of, well, uh, let, let me just sort of ask Morali to sort of, if he can, to sort of articulate what ETCC is, is thinking here. Sure. So, um, so I'll talk to. <laughs> so I want to say that I, I think let me touch base with uh, with Rob as to um, you know when he said that you know what is his perspective. But with that said, um, I could 
imagine that you know I think where where DDCC is coming from is you know I think we we always supported um, you know like like Ram brought up you know like an architectural framework which is uh, comprising of these components and all these components have interfaces and if we have components which are you know something like uh, GSL which can interoperate or which can a module which can work with other other general ledger platforms other uh, distributed ledger platforms that's the ideal state um, that you know DDCC and companies like DDCC would like the industry or would like Hyperledger to go towards, right? So I think, um, you know, from that uh, principal perspective, I think that's where we are going after is to, I think interoperability between ledgers is a higher goal, but before that, you know, can we have components, uh, you know, something like GSL, which can, a module which can work with uh, other distributed ledgers and that'll be a, That'll be a start, right? But I'll I'll touch base with Rob, you know, making sure that that is his perspective. But I would imagine that uh, you know this is what uh, DDCC would like to see in the market. In okay. The hyper -lecture. Fair enough. So so we have one minute left, and let me just sort of wrap up by saying this: um, if if you could touch base with Rob and then sort of start a, a, a discussion thread in the mailing list um, on the TSC list on you know where where this is coming from because it, it, again I think what you're what you're intimate, uh, intimating here is that indeed there is interest in a component such as this and so then the question becomes okay so what are we going to do about that um, you know DAH has proposed uh, uh, this from an architectural perspective, the next step would be, so collectively, how are we going to address this? Are we going to go build something? Is this something that we can use, you can configure one of the existing things in such a way that it accomplishes the objective? Or we can all try and implement it in our respective um, platforms and so forth. Um, but I, I do think that we want to start that discussion. So I would encourage you, Morali, to sort of just post the, the interest in this, because I think, you know, Tomas, from, from a DH perspective, you guys were trying to figure out, is anybody interested in something like this? And I think the answer is, is I think yes. And so let's start a conversation in the mailing list about, so where do we go with this, right? What can we do? Could it be implemented and so forth? And it would be useful, I think, to, to share some of the uh, experiments and so forth that you've been doing, Tomas, to understand you know, what are the limitations of what the existing technologies can, can achieve, where, you know, do things need to be changed and so forth so that we can actually start thinking about, well, if we were to come up with a component as, as Morali was describing, how would we do that? And um, so I think with that, I think we um, are at the end of the job. And I'll thank everybody and um, talk to you all uh, next week. Thank you, bye. Thanks. 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 Thanks.